All right, welcome to the guitar side of the lounge over here. And uh, I got an assortment of uh, effects pedals and guitars to show you guys. We're going to start with the effects pedals first. Uh, first of all, we have the Dunlop Univibe reissue. Uh, I have a couple of original Univibes, but they don't stand up to the abuse on the road very well. So uh, it was a real blessing when Dunlop reissued the Univibe, what, 10 or 15 years ago. And I've had one of these in my pedal ever since. If you want to have the blue on black rhythm sound, this is the way to get it right here. Okay, next, right here we have the Ibanez Tube King. This is a cool overdrive pedal, really unique sound because it uses an actual tube. It's got a 12AX7 right here uh, that actually gives you an authentic tube overdrive sound for your guitar. This is the Pigtronics envelope phaser and I use this on the song Anywhere the Wind Blows in combination with uh, an Analog Man chorus pedal uh, to get a really huge sound. You know this thing can you can make all kinds of crazy sounds. You can get really out there or you can get really tame you know whatever your imagination whichever way your imagination takes you. Next we have the uh, Zen Drive. Now this is a really cool overdrive pedal. It's something that's just been introduced in the past few years uh, a lot of guys are really into this pedal. It gets a lot of really cool overtones and sustain, but it, uh, you know, uh, it, you can just get a lot of really great tones out of this pedal uh, that you can't get out of uh, a lot of other pedals. It's pretty unique. This is the Fuzzy Drive. This is another uh, just you know overdrive pedal. It's got a little bit of a fuzz vibe to it, and uh, you know I use this every once in a while. It's, uh, it's good, you know, I, I like to have a nice variety of overdrive pedals to get different textures and different sounds, especially when making a record. It's good to have an assortment because then you can get different sounds because in a studio everything is magnified, the sound of it, you can really hear the differences. Now we have a few different pedals uh, from Exotic Pedals and these guys, Exotic Effects, they sent me these right before I went into the studio and I use these primarily. Some people use these as their primary overdrive sound. I actually use these on some of the rhythm tracks. So this is the AC Plus. This is a very popular pedal. This is the AC Booster and this is the BB Plus. And I use each one of these uh, in various, uh, you know, uh, amp configurations and guitar, uh, you know, applications. Uh, but I primarily use them uh, for my rhythm sound on a couple of different tracks to get, you know, a gritty but not too overdriven rhythm sound. This, I'm a big, I love wah-wah pedals and, uh, you know, I've always been on the search for the modern day version of the original Vox Clyde McCoy wah pedal. Uh, it's been like so many companies have tried to recreate that pedal and uh, you know it's really hard. Not, not many people have gotten close. Uh, currently I'm using a custom audio electronics wah pedal in my pedal board on the road and I also use that on uh, one of the songs on the record. Uh, these wah pedals right here this is a RMC Real McCoy Custom wah pedal. Now the purpose of this wah is to get very close to the sound of the original Clyde McCoy wah. And what we have right here is an original Vox Clyde McCoy wah pedal. These things are very, uh, pretty rare and uh, very hard to come by, uh, especially in all original condition uh, that still function properly. So I don't take this out on the road, I reserve this only for the studio. This pedal, I bought this pedal when I was like, I don't know, 16 or 17 years old. Um, it was like a couple of hundred bucks at the time. It's called a Klon Centaur. Uh, most of the gearheads out there will know exactly what this pedal is when they see it. They'll be kind of bummed out to see that it's in such rough condition, but you know, I use all of my gear and it kind of gets put through the paces on the road. This thing is just basically a nice clean boost. You know, some people use it as their overdrive, uh, but I found that it's a really great clean boost for your signal and uh, you can use it in conjunction with, with other pedals to get a really great sound. These things are really rare. They don't make them anymore. And uh, if you find them online, they're gonna be uh, north of $1,000. So this is a really great pedal and I'm glad that I got it uh, when they first came out. It was a lot cheaper. This is my trusty uh, original vintage Ibanez TS-808 Tube Screamer. This is one of the earliest production models of this pedal. 
Uh, I got it many, many years ago. It's been used on all of my records. I, I took it on the road with me for a long time uh, until uh, I met a guy by the name of uh, Mike, the analog man, and he started modifying uh, tube screamers for me to take out on the road, and now I leave this one at home. And then Ibanez has just reissued this exact pedal, and I've been using it, and they also make a TS-808 hand-wired edition of this pedal that, that's currently in my pedal board. It's a really great sounding pedal, but I keep the original one uh, only for studio use now. There's another really great and very rare vintage pedal, and it has uh, one of the most unique sounds out of out of all the pedals that you could probably buy. This is the Tycho Brahe Octavia. This is an original Octavia. Uh, I have a reissued version of this pedal that I have on the road with me that's made by a company called Chicago Iron. It's a very faithful reproduction of the original, but this is in fact uh, an original uh, Tycho Brahe Octavia. I use this on the new album. And uh, again, I like to try and reserve this for special occasions or uh, studio use only, just because of how rare it is. This is a very old and original Dallas Arbiter fuzz face, and this has, uh, this is one of the most desirable fuzz pedals out there, and uh, it's, it's in rough shape. I took this out on the road with me for a long time. I actually need to send it off and uh, have a couple of things addressed, get a new knob put on it, get the back plate put back on it, but you can see in here this is all original stuff. And, uh, you know, there's not, nothing quite like an original fuzz face. Over here we have another vintage fuzz face. And this is a little bit uh, later model. Um, I, I believe this one is probably like an early 70s model. Uh, but again, a really great sound and pedal uh, that I use in the studio. Took it out on the road with me for a period, period of time. But, you know, again, these things, uh, they make such great reissue pedals nowadays. And uh, these things, uh, you know, you just wouldn't want to lose one or break one. So I keep them around for the studio. This is another fuzz face pedal that was built for me by uh, Mike the Analog Man. And uh, he built this for me a long time ago, uh, probably back in the late 90s. And I put it in my board. And uh, it's a really great modern day version of, uh, of a fuzz face. Uh, Mike really makes authentic uh, pedals that uh, you know use vintage components uh, to get the sound uh, of the originals and this is no exception. This pedal is called the Captain Coconut. This is a, a pretty early version. I actually have another one uh, which is the black version as well so I have both versions of these pedals. Uh, this one is not produced anymore uh, so they're pretty rare and hard to come by. Uh, this one incorporates a Fuzz, a Univibe, and an Octavia all in the same pedal. Um, these things are pretty collectible and they sound really incredible. Uh, it's another pedal that I've had for a very long time and uh, I reserve it just for the studio now. Now we're getting over uh, into uh, some of the Analog Man pedals uh, that, that I've accumulated over the years that Mike has made for me. Uh, this is Mike's version, specifically uh, his own version of a, of a fuzz face. He calls it the sun face. Uh, this is a really great pedal, very popular among a lot of guitar aficionados out there. This is another version of that uh, that's slightly different. And, uh, you know, it's got this channel over here and it's got this, which I think is a, a volume control level uh, that allows you to manipulate the pedal slightly more than what you can do with just this pedal. This is one of the biggest contributors to my current sound. Um, this is called the Analog Man King of Tone pedal. Uh, this is basically two different overdrive pedals in one uh, housing. Uh, you can set them independently. One's uh, got a slightly higher gain structure to it than the other. Uh, I use this pedal all the time. I use it all over the record and I use it every night uh, in my live concerts. It's one of the best sounding overdrive pedals out there. This is one of the Analog Man uh, modified Tube Screamer reissues. Now, Mike used to take these. These are a TS-9 reissue. It's a different circuit than the TS-808. I prefer the sound of the TS-808. Uh, they did not used to reissue the TS-808. So Mike would take the TS-9s that they did reissue and he would rebuild them and, and basically modify them into a TS-808 circuit. 
And he also would do a couple of other things to make it a little more uh, roadworthy and rugged because uh, a lot of my stuff gets put through the paces and it gets, you know, it can go through some abuse on the road and a lot of my pedals were breaking down and Mike figured out a way to make this sucker road proof. This is a, uh, another Analog Man fuzz pedal. This one's a little more psychedelic, uh, hence the design on it. It's called the Analog Man Peppermint Fuzz. Uh, just, you know, full on, this thing gets really gritty. And, uh, you know, it's a certain sound. I mean, uh, you know, it's a, it's a particular sound. So uh, I've used it on a couple of things here and there. I just like to use it when I'm feeling kind of, uh, you know, kind of frisky. Right here is the uh, Analog Man chorus pedal. This is his first chorus pedal that he came out with and I used this uh, in my live setup when I realized that I couldn't take the Leslie 16 out on the road with me. Uh, I didn't wanted something that sounded close to a Leslie. Well, even though this is a chorus pedal, uh, you can set this thing uh, at a certain speed and a certain depth and you can make this thing sound almost just like a Leslie. So that's what I use it for. Now he has a pedal. Uh, that actually is similar to the King of Tone, but it's a chorus and he calls it the bi-chorus. So it's a chorus pedal with two individual chorus uh, circuits in it, so you can set them at two different settings. So I have, on the road with me, I have the bi-chorus and I have one set on very slow and one set on fast to get the two different Leslie sounds that I'm trying to recreate on the road. The last pedal we have here is the latest uh, of the Jim Dunlop uh, fuzz space pedals. And this, I believe, is the Hendrix version. Uh, it's the Hendrix reissue of the fuzz space. And I took this into the studio and I A-beat it with uh, my originals and I was pretty impressed with it. I think they, uh, they, they got this one pretty good.